Hey everybody, my name is Carl Slaap and I'm a watchmaker here in the Netherlands. And today a special about an unsung hero in watchmaking, which is the Canon Pinion. Cheers. This video about a Canon Pinion is a real detailed view of a watch movement. So if you want to have a broader vision, some more information, please have a look at our YouTube channel Chronoglide because we have several uh, videos, well quite a lot of videos, about watchmaking, about how a watch works. Please have a look if you want to have more information. But now the Canon Pinion. Well the Canon Pinion is this small part but has an important role in the workings of a watch movement because you can see here with the crown out this is the hand setting setting the time with the hands but if you have a look at the cannon pinion like this it is attached to the center wheel and this is a genius. This side of the movement, even if I'm turning the crown, nothing is moving. Because they're all wheels, pinions, and with these wheels, there is no slip. Um, if you want to really push uh, a gear train, the teeth will break, but you need the slip to set the hands. Now, that is the interesting part. So, on this side, the normal watch movement is all is a gear train, no slip. But to set the hands, you need some friction. And there it is, the cannon pinion. So, here, this cannon pinion is directly set on the center wheel. Let me show you. So here is the cannon pinion and I will take it off and then I'll show you how it works. I just use a, a pin like this to grip but you can use a presto tool and even a sturdy tweezer just to lift it off. Just to grip it and lift it off. So here you can see the pivot of the same center wheel. But there's a catch. Look at this. There you can see a small indentation. Do you see that? A bit mushroom shaped. There is the indentation. And there's a genius because the Canon pinion has a small indentation right there. It's a small notch. That Canon pinion has got a small notch. There is the center wheel. And there, that indentation is keeping the Canon pinion in place and make sure it's got a rotating friction fit. And the friction, that is the most important part. So this small indentation must be exactly here, because if it's a bit lower and here, the cannon pinion will not fit, it will just come off. If it's a tiny bit higher and it's there, it won't fit, friction fit and come off. That is crucial. That very small indentation I just showed you means the friction of the cannon pinion moving around the pivot of the center wheel. If it's too loose, the movement will revolve, will just run. But if it's too loose, the cannon pinion will remain still and the hands won't move. If it's too tight, then it's way too much friction for the cannon pinion to move and the pivot might break because it is just too much. 
There is the tricky bit. There is the cannon pinion with the small indentation. And that just fits there on the pivot of the center wheel. So there we go. And just push it. And if you push it, you hear a click. And that is simply the small notch getting into place. So now you can move the hands with the pivot of the center wheel stays stationary because of the teeth, remember? Well, that's the friction of the hands. If you have to change that friction, you need, well, I use a staking tool and I will show you. For this, I use this stake. You see that? To make the small indentation, the crucial bit for the cannon pinion is to support it from the inside. Otherwise you tap it to make the small indentation and if it's way too small, it doesn't fit the pivot anymore. Crucial! So if you have the staking tool, the small cannon pinion supports it from the inside and if it's got a, a, cent, a sweep second hand from the center, the cannon pinion, the hole will be through and through. So it's way easier with a smoothing brooch just to put it on, support it from the inside. So if you tap it, it won't just squash and the function will be gone because it doesn't fit the pivot of the center wheel anymore. That's crucial. But as always in watchmaking, they are exceptions. Anyway, you do need the friction to set the hands, but there are several options and I will show you. The, and this is what I love about watchmaking, different solutions for the same problem. It's excellent. Look at this. This is the more modern function. Still, you see the cannon pinion, but it's placed friction fit on a wheel. And maybe I can show you like this. The cannon pinion is now stationary and you see the friction of the wheel. So you don't need to tap the indentation. The friction fit is already in the design. Same with the, for instance, Voljoux 7750. Beautiful movement. This is the huge cannon pinion, but as you can see, without any indentation. So with the 7750, there is no friction on the cannon pinion, but it's just a few wheels further on the line. And then you can see here, Just a small wheel, but with the small triangular spring, this is where the friction comes from. So please have a close look at the design of the movement. If the cannon pinion is extremely loose and hasn't got no indentation, then the friction will be somewhere else in the gear train. So there are many exceptions. So please have a close look. And um, well, please have a close look. So I really do hope that was helpful. The friction fit of the cannon pinion to the center wheel. If there is an indentation, make sure if it needs tapping some more friction, do it in the exact same location, otherwise your cannon pinion will not uh, fit anymore. Please support it from the inside if you have to adjust the indentation. And please have a look because there are many exceptions, too much to mention. But have a close look at the design of the movement 
where is the friction coming from for setting the hands? That is crucial because if you tap, for example, like I just showed you on a 7750, you have two places where the friction is and that is way too much. I cannot tell you if the friction is enough. You just feel it. Uh, just like a lot in watchmaking. How much does it need? Just enough. But imagine, your movement is running perfectly and the friction of the cannon pinion is just not enough. For example, if you have a calendar in your uh, movement, the movement will push the calendar to the next date at 12 o'clock midnight. But that pushing needs some force of the movement. If the friction is just not enough, the movement will try to push the, uh, the date. But if the friction is not enough, the movement inside the cannon pinion will just move. And your hands and the date will still stationary because that the only connection between the movement itself and the hands and the date and maybe pointer date, um, a lot of complications is the friction in the cannon pinion. I do hope that makes sense. You have the gear train and the normal movement and the only connection is the friction of the cannon pinion which uh, um, works the rest of the complication. So if that friction is just not enough, uh, the movement will slip and the hands will run slow or stop. And if it's really uh, not too much friction, you can have that the movement is running perfectly and your hands are still, especially just before midnight, uh, if there is a date uh, uh, complication. So make sure the friction is just enough. If you tap it, support it from the inside and make sure the indentation is always in exactly the way where it was. Otherwise you get a whole lot of other problems. I do hope that was helpful. Uh, please have a look at my uh, YouTube channel Chronoglide, a lot about watchmaking. And please leave comments. We love to read your comments. If you have suggestions for future projects or topics or anything, <laughs> please let me know. We love to read your comments. Enjoy your day. See ya. Bye bye.